German auto suppliers coming into the area and looking. Uh, Chattanooga is increasing uh, production at the Volkswagen plant. They're adding the SUV lines. And we just signed up with the DPA Economic Development Partnership of Alabama, and we became a partner with them. And uh, Bill Taylor, who is their head person, used to be the plant manager at Mercedes Benz. And he has a real strong relationship with government companies, and they started going over every two months, going to visit or industries over there, and then coming back and trying to build a good rapport to get more German companies in our area. The last two that we've had, both of them wanted rail. And uh, so you know, we can't pick and select which sites to look at. But y'all got a great site out here. I mean, it's perfect. Close enough to the interstate, which that's the second big thing companies want. So we need to get that done. And if possible, a geotech study. I'm not sure I would say the geotech study is going to be somewhere around, for probably both of those sites, $6,500 to $7,000. That's where they basically drill down until they can't go any further, until they hit rock. And they determine what the water table is and everything. But that site out there ought to be perfect. And I don't see any problem with it. Now, the site north of RTI, it's probably, I think that stream creek comes down through that property. That's going to require Corps of Engineers to come in and look at that and give us a sign off on that too, eventually. But I think right now that we really need to do those two sides and also the one cross marshal from ADM. They'll probably tell us, yes, we need to do a little bit more study on that in the north, but at least we could get started on this and have it done. And uh, that will speed up the process. And when these companies come in, they want to be ready to go immediately. They don't want to wait, okay, we'll wait you know, two or three months on an environmental assessment and so forth. They don't want to do it. And we're competing, well, the two we're competing with right now, there are about 120 sites that we're competing with. So you've got to have everything ready to go, you know, when they're wanting to go. And, uh, but anyway, this is just a request that uh, uh, Rainsville submits this request to ADM. And again, it's no cost to the city. And I'm talking to the guy that does the uh, uh, environmental assessment, he wants to get back up to his uh, pay line for the East Alabama. So he's looking for reasons to get back up to it. So any questions? To make this happen, what would you need from us tonight? Uh, just an okay. Uh, I, I, well, I figured we'd need to empower the mayor to sign this once we get the right parcels of land on it that opens it up where we can get the study on it. And that's, that's what Mitch was talking about earlier, uh, this, this letter. Right here. Yeah, we'll get the parcels and a map of that to Roger where y'all can put all that into a letter and send to a but it's, uh, it's hard to believe ADM is doing something like that for free. Believe me, it's amazing. And we want to jump on it before everybody else does. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me just, one other thing I want to say. I gave also to Roger a copy of our new incentives. He may want to get a copy to each of the you know, council members and all. But this is our new incentive program that goes into effect June 2nd. And we're still including the Department of Revenue and the Department of Commerce still trying to figure it out uh, and get all of the details worked out. But some of the things increases property tax abatements from 10 years to 20 years. I'm not happy about that. I think 10 years is probably plenty. But if after 10 years, you have to get a separate resolution from the city separate one from the county, a separate one from the state. And uh, again, that just messes everything up. We're trying to talk that uh, Department of Revenue into a very simple form that can be used. But still, I, you know, I think 10 years of putting on property tax. And again, this is non-educational property tax. But, uh, and then the other one, well, one of the other ones is a 3% incentive uh, that given to companies based on their wages. So if a company comes in, they employ 
50 employees at the end of the year, the state will calculate 3% of their wages and give them a check for it. And this is a, oh, that's going to eat up all of our money. No, this will be from an account that's already been paid in by the company over the year, and they'll get some of it back, basically in the form of a tax credit, but it's going to be a check to them. And uh, Mississippi, Georgia, Tennessee, all of them are doing things like this. We have fallen way behind on the incentives. Uh, and I hate incentives, but that's, you know, that's what it is nowadays. But you're always getting something more, and we always calculate how much incentive we can give uh, before uh, you know, we're overboard. That is, we're losing money by doing so. And we've also signed on to another company, Shamira, to help us do these cost benefit studies uh, on, and analysis on our incentives. So, any questions? And anytime y'all like to come by the office, sometimes sit down and talk about uh, some of these issues and things. I, right now, I can't really explain to you the incentive programs because they stand. But, we do plan later on in the year to have all of the municipalities meet and bring in the Department of Revenue, Department of Commerce, and the people to sit down and explain these incentives uh, so we all know exactly what they are and what we can be and we can't be and things of that nature. Thank y'all very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I have uh, passed out a, uh, three sheets of paper and it tells a little bit about the Freedom Fest, about what all we're going to do at the Freedom Fest. It tells about the lineup, the second page has got the lineup of the, of the singers for that day. And the third page is the expenditures of what we are spending out of our budget on that. So I was just, I wanted to make sure everybody seen that before we you know, got too, too much further into it. So that's uh, that's under budget about six thousand dollars for for the pretty place. So <clears throat> the next thing I had was uh, Ronnie Ronnie McDowell was going to be our feature singer that night, and we have to send this contract back to him. Uh, the mayor has to sign it. Um, we have to pay him half the money that's funding and half of it that night after the concert. So this is this is that contract for that. Um, Do we have to empower Mayor Sun Andrews? Do that in the I just got that to go. I'm off for it. 
Okay. It'll, it'll help improve the fields of oh, the yeah. school and, and here to fill the dream. So and, and I'm going to tell you, we, we've got we've got some of the, the best baseball and softball fields around here that you can find anywhere in the state. So if we if we do this and we improve them that much more, it's going to be great. So. And kind of to brag a little bit, We've had a tournament the last two weekends. We did cancel. We had a tournament this weekend, but it was kind of a looking holiday weekend. We filled up as quick as we wanted to, but we didn't have a tournament scheduled for next week, the next weekend, and the following weekend, too. So there are people who lower it. It's been a solid for a month. Any other questions? And we had several people. I know Roger told me, too, that to talk about it, it's the nicest place I've ever been. Well, one of the directors told us that it was nice to see she went to be for softball tournaments. So, I I I've got two things. One of them I spoke with Barry. I'm wanting to hire the new swimming pool workers and reactivate workers that we had last year. And they went for the field of dreams, and I have their names right here. So it's going to be the call now. Or, you're good and you're right and the but just want to get it to her. Yeah, that would be the easiest thing. I'm going to make that motion when we hire a pool worker. <laughs> and also met with Sam Phillips, just talking about the Shiloh Estate subdivision. And I'll just read exactly what Sam told me. He said, the city of Rangeville will accept the streets in the Shiloh Estate subdivision as shown on the plat of said subdivision and recorded in plat book 7, page 129. Said in the probate office of DeKalb County. Said, of DeKalb County, Alabama. Said, upon the condition that the property owner of the Shiloh Estate participate in the cost of resurfacing the street with asphalt. So, Mr. Phillips was ideal, and it sounds good to us. If the citizens are willing to help us, Pave the street, we'll take the street in. And the, I mean, I said, no, I do you know what kind of cost? His, he's got the fee right here. The, it's, the, to pave everything is 24560 bucks. And that would be basically. Well, our problem is that's going to keep Mr. Tidmore from selling his home because it's got to be. You know, the loan has got to be taken over by the city in order for Mr. Tidmore to sell his home. And, and I don't know that, that four homeowners, you know, would have $8,000 a piece. Y'all be responsible for half of it. Y'all be responsible for half of it. That's the total, and the homeowner would be responsible for half of it. So $3,000 a piece. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you talked to any of the homeowners? I got this stuff back today. I talked with Mr. Parrish a few minutes ago on the phone, and he said he didn't know if he was going to be back in time or not. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I said, do you want me to move this to the next meeting before we can talk to everybody? Well, I talked to him a little while ago. I hate to stuff the traffic right now, but $3,000 for me. I mean, I got four kids, and you know, at $3,000, it'll come along too easy. I understand. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, I want to sell my house, but I don't want to put my name in the hardship either, so. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. My name across the street's got two kids, and I don't know what kind of money situation they've got. Yeah. Um, so. um, I don't have it to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. Um, What's the practice been in, in years past when you take in a road? Is it it has to be to a certain standard? And to get it to a certain standard, you know, I think we're willing to pay half and help, but you know in, in what I'm understanding in times past they've been up to standard previously before we took them in. Yeah, because we have several people that right now trying to get us to take their streets and we're nowhere near. Is, yeah. Excuse me, but is there any way for the city to take the road? I mean, I know I live in country club estates, and I know when we purchased over there, we weren't in the city of Rainsville, and it, we weren't in the county either. Our roads were just the river. 
and you know the city of Rainsville took them over, and it took you know a year, year and a half for y'all to pay. But I know we're talking about a lot more houses right. and a lot more taxpayers. But what if, would the city take it over and just fill in potholes and chart it? Could they do that? Does it have? To, does the city have to take it over to pay it? Because we just we just got to make it to where these people can sell their homes. Right. You know, Mr. Tidmore's stuck in his home if we can't do this. I mean, because FHA and VA, any governmental loan is not going to approve. You know, that's my problem. Okay. Uh, it could probably be done cheaper. <clears throat> See, the standard for that road, for the city to take it over, is not asphalt. Is that asphalt or is that Tom Road? That's asphalt. I remember Sam yeah. talking to me about it. To get it to standard for the city, it's got to be churning so much. It's got to be back slope the ditches has. It's got to have tar and gravel on it. That's that's the standard to get right. it for the city. Right. So this is a little bit above and beyond. Right. If 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 you know. But now later on, it it probably wouldn't get tar. It probably wouldn't get asphalt for maybe it might be five, six, seven years. You know, before it got asphalt. But now tar and gravel life's real good. But that's what the standard is to get it. You have to get it to that standard before the city would take it over. Mm -hmm. So if, if they're willing to do this, they might be willing to do the standard and let, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it would or not, but yeah. bring it to the standard and then, I you mean, know. because I caused a ruckus just by bringing this up with the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and, and poor Mr. Graham, he's got a whole pile of emails from me. He knows the ruckus I went through. I know, so. Country Club Lanes was one of those that we, we took in and it was tar and gravel. Yeah. And then exactly. after a period of time, mm -hmm. then when they were paving in that area, they paid they paid over. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, the tar and gravel is fine. Yeah. And it's a little and bit thank the Lord he didn't have any of us have to pay for it. <laughs> but it was it was up to the standard right. of the city time. at that okay. time. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this one needs to be brought up to some kind of standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. We, I mean, we just, the main thing we need is the city to sign off that they would take that road. But I know you guys want, you know, the neighbors to say yes, we'll pay for it or help assist y'all in paying for it. And I can't answer for them because we have some. If I can call <laughs> Sam and get an estimate on the tar and gravel, not asphalt, that, can you get me the phone numbers? Everybody that lives there and let me call. You do that. I'll call and get an estimate from Sam, so we'll do half. Yeah, and I don't know how long we can delay this VA loan and get the Tidmores out of their home. You know, the Tidmores are wanting to buy another house in Rainsville, too. Right. So we're, they're wanting to stay citizens, so they'll be the taxpayers still. We want, we want them to. Because <laughs> he's been threatening for a year or two to live in Georgia. I've been talking right, about Right, exactly, exactly. And I'm trying to keep them here to sell them another house, too. Yeah. So. Oh. I mean, I can, we should be able to have that by the next meeting. No. Oh. Which is the. It probably won't work for first. that. Yeah. The first. Yeah, because I mean we've already delayed it. I mean because we were supposed to close by the 18th, and VA will only extend or lock, lock in a loan for so long. So. And, and the money is only approved for this loan in a certain amount of days. And this, uh, we went in the contract and we need to spend it this to get it to our plan. Um, we're probably out of contract actually we look at it and we do it. But the lending is only approving this to a certain date. And I actually passed that date. So they agree to so we're we're send it. So now as we go back we get the letter now. Mm -hmm. The lender is not requiring that the road gets repaired. They just want to know that somebody is taking over the road, i.e. taking responsibility. Right. Because we can't get the neighbors to sign a road maintenance agreement. No. Yeah. So is there tar? Is there any pavement at all, or is it just a chart? Right? What is it, Bob? Sure, isn't it? It was pavement. Over the years, it's been a little bit of care. It's got it was tar and gravel, and then it's just kind of falling apart. Yeah, I mean, they, at one time, they added up a standard back when Mr. T built it, I guess. Yeah, yeah there was some, there was some, I, and I don't know all about it. I've heard Sam talk about it, but there was some, uh, uh, Time in there that it probably should have been turned over to see, it never was. It got it got delayed, it fell through the cracks or whatever. I, I really don't know. I wasn't involved in it. So, okay. Would, would you time. think a tar and gravel job would be about half of what that can be in hands? 
We still have to, Brandon still has to talk to the people, so there's there's no way we can move on it's not. It would have to be the next meeting. And I think it would be more appropriate is if there was a meeting outside the public meeting with the actual residents to see what kind of, I want to talk about people's financial situations in the public meeting. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. if we can do it that route and then bring it I back to the table. I can call tomorrow. Okay. Do that if you can get me the numbers. And after mm -hmm. I talk to him, then I'll call everybody and Okay. So you can yeah. Glad to do that. yeah, we can I mean, we, yeah. We can do it private, that's great. Yeah. Just okay. whatever. Okay. Whatever. Because it sounds like y'all are in agreement if we can get the neighbors yes. to cooperate. So yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, that's cool. Yeah, and like I said, we I don't think anyone here has a problem with it if yeah. Yeah. we can get a little bit of help. And here. I'm with you. Um, I have a resolution here for the Tom Bevel rates. There was a little bit of confusion the last meeting, and I apologize. I had a family emergency, which I couldn't be here. Um, but Miss Mary, by the request of our city clerk Kelly, did an attachment that I'm actually going to leave with this resolution so that there's clarity on it. Um, about a year ago, we had raised the rates up. Actually, we did it in two segments. And um, the board allowed it to complete an entire year, and we looked and compared the days and the amounts. We couldn't leave the rental rate as it was in the past 20 years. We just couldn't. Um, the building was not being taken care of to par. And it was just lacking a, a lot of things. So I, I feel like the board has come to an agreement with rates that I think are going to stick. I think they're fair to those who rent the building. I think it's um, more reasonable and cost effective. And so these are the rates that we're going to be voting on tonight. And I would also ask that the city clerk add this to our web page, not our web page, um, our Facebook page that it is out in the public. And Tim, I mean, you could add it to our Tom Bevel page. Um, I'm going to be doing that. And then um, we had voted for all non-matching grants for the Imagination Library with our AMRB, which is our 5013C partner, um, that they were approved. And this is for the Imagination Library. It's at no cost to the city. Um, since Carolee Foreman has left, I have taken on full responsibility of doing all the paperwork, all the grant writing, um, all the applications, all the reports, taking over on the, the actual web page of checking the children. Um, it's a lot of work, um, but I have finally caught up. And so all these grants are already approved. The mayor has been emp empowered to sign it. I would also like to have our pro tem empowered to sign it in the absence of um, our mayor. There was a little, we got $5,000 for our splash pad. Um, other non-matching grants were denied because of several reasons for the city of Brainsville's status right now. And I felt like it would be better if we held off the splash pad for a little while and let things cool off. Um, they agreed to make this, the $5,000, still give it to us, but for the Imagination Library. Like I said, no cost to the City of Rainsville. And so I've completed the application. Um, I would like the mayor to sign it, but in the absence of the mayor, if he cannot, I would also like to have the pro tem empowered to sign it as a backup. Um, it will be this, and then there was a miscommunication between me and Kelly, and it was my fault I sent so many emails. We have not got the printed 2015 cooperative agreement. It's exactly like the one you signed in 2014. Um, word for word, except it's blank where you're going to sign. Uh, I'm also going to just move with that be signed as soon as possible because technically our grant is approved right now. They're just waiting to put the check in the account. They have to have these two in order to do it. Um, so that is it. Uh, our budget is a little upside down right now because of positions not being filled, because of um, needs in certain departments. So I'm going to ask that we all look at our schedules tonight to set a budget meeting. 
Also, another thing that I would like to request that I'm going to move on tonight is that all the department heads um, be required to give to the council and mayor an itemized, as detailed as possible, internal budget for their departments. And then they'll supply it to us before our budget meeting, and then everybody has a chance to look at those itemized lists. We can either adopt them, we can send them back and say, cut it by 10% where you can. That way we can see exactly what needs are in each department, and that will help us as a council to really um, narrow down our budget, get exactly what the city needs, because right now we have a lot of needs and a lot of money floating right now that's not delegated to anything. So what I would like to do is set this out a month out and for the department heads to have their budgets to us within two weeks. Is that fair, Alan? No way. <laughs> to have it in two weeks? No way. Not for me. I'm doing a pretty good job right now. There's nobody in your department, Becky. You don't have a budget no. within your department. No, we never have. I have okay. to sit down and completely make one from scratch. The council's always made the budget. And, and we will, but what I would like to see is for from the department's perspective on what they would like to have and what their specific needs are in things uh, for the so end and for the next I, I, year. I've always wanted to be in, in on that, but they've never, I can't do it two weeks. Give me a time frame. Four weeks. A month? Okay. So if we do it, if we set it out, maybe, if we set our department meeting, our budget meeting, maybe the first couple weeks in July, then you guys can get it to us maybe the third week in June. I mean, that's what. So. That's what it is. Okay. So what I'm going to ask is that the department heads' budgets are due. Well, we'd be able to go in and, and, and talk to the the lady that does the uh, accounting and get numbers. Because we don't have numbers. We don't have numbers for budget items. I can bring you, uh, she sends out a monthly report and it kind of breaks it down per department. Uh, I'll bring you everything associated with the sewer department and the latest breakdown. And that would be a good guideline to start from and kind of okay. give an idea of, of, of what we need to add. So you guys don't have an itemized, see that shocks me. No. That's, that's just surprising. I have no idea. The way we took so much out of the budget before is we, we knew there were problems. And we corrected the problems and that corrected the short pile of the budget. <coughs> we had no knowing of what was actually in that budget. <coughs> what I'd like to do is get it to the point where you guys are submitting exactly what your needs are, us looking, because we, I mean, we know the numbers, but we'd like to look at detailed itemized lists so that we can say, we feel like these are reasonable, explain why you need this, can you cut this back, and then that way, when the budget's completed, you have numbers to go by that you know, hey, I still got X amount of dollars in this category, I still got X amount of, but I'm, I'm surprised that we don't have that within the department heads. Well, how do you feel about that? I, I mean, great. I think it's a good thing it's to start. Great. It's been great. Okay. So, good. So we'll set department heads for June 22nd. If they can be given to the city clerk, and I'll, I'll make a motion on this, if they can be given to the city clerk, that way the city clerk can email it out to the whole administration. And then, budget meeting in July. Our meeting is on the 6th, so do we want to have it on that next Monday the 13th? I can't tell you about next week, let's just do that. Okay, so do we want to bring that up in June? Okay. Well, if everybody can look at their calendars and we'll vote on it the next meeting for the actual budget part job. And that's all I have.
Um, we talked at the last meeting about not having a workshop. Are we going to, we have to do something? I mean, I thought we were starting the meeting at five rather than a workshop. Did I misunderstand? I'm this? in favor of dropping the workshop um, and just doing workshops on as many places. The problem with that is the place and time and the days of the month are set by the ordinance. So that can't be arbitrarily changed by me or it can't be changed by simple um, majority vote. So we have to be that ordinance, ordinance will have to be repealed and never passed or have to be amended. We have to go through that process. I'm, you know, I, I think I think the workshop we need is just a duplication of it and we will save time. But that's it's going to take that. Um, I just had another question. If we go into just a business meeting and not have the work session where we talk about it, to my understanding, I was in a meeting just Saturday morning and it's a it's a board and we handle meetings through Robert's rules where someone has to make a motion, someone has to second it, then you can discuss it. Are we going to follow that procedure if that's the route we go and make sure we have motions and seconds before we discuss and then amend those motions, just like the democratic process? Or are we going to do a, a modified version? I mean, I, I just want to do it correctly where everybody, uh, his voice is heard and there's not a better use of time, which I understand we start the meeting and do without a work session. I think that's a better use of time and I'm in favor of that. I just want to know the procedure. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I would be in favor of, of more structures and rules and procedure. Um, but those rules and procedure and structure are only going to be as good as what the majority of the body is going to respect. Yes. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to that. I'm absolutely open to that. I, if I could follow up with that, I, I seem to remember when we uh, first came into office, we set up that we were going to use Robert's Rules of Order. And that's a difficult, um, that's a difficult task to follow it to the letter. But if we, if we start that process with meetings, I think it would be very beneficial and it takes a lot of the personality out of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I will stress that you cannot discuss anything on the floor without a motion in a second. And, you know, that doesn't mean we have to pass it, but we do have to have a motion in a second on the floor before we can discuss it. And, you know, I think it would be a wise decision to take the work session away unless it is an as need basis. I mean, I'm in favor of that. However, best to do that. Now, I mean, our handbook has Robert's rules and what we are allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do simplified that a kindergartner could understand it. So I would encourage everybody to read it because it's only as good as everybody understands what can happen and what can't happen. Well, the only thing I would say to follow up with that is. Traditionally, we discuss, then we make a motion. That's the opposite of Robert's rules. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you have to make a motion, you have to second it, then you open up the floor for discussion. If you don't like the motion, you can amend the motion and continue to you have a document or a, that's a lot of writing for you. And it would be very wise to record it so that it's always the same way. But uh, in the meeting I was in, there's a recorder every time that I've said that previously, not to you, but to others. If we would record it, and we have it, we can back up to a file we can have, there's no question about what was said, how it was said, and that everybody understands that process. So, I'll just throw that out there. Either, but that's all that I was concerned about. I thought we were starting, but I understand we need to change the order. Do you think it's more wise to repeal it or to amend it? Well, we've actually got two organizational ordinances on the books. Uh, one from the 80s and one from the uh, 14 or earlier this year when a bill was passed. Um, I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we, would, would you 
mind looking at those two things and see which is the best way to go and then we can go from there. I would suggest that let's amend the other one, the later one, and include in the amendment that it supersedes the time limits. You mean starting the time at five? Well, how we would, how we want to change it? I'm, I'm good with how we all can change it. But when we write that, when the amend the, the 2014 one, amend it, and in the language say that it supersedes the, the 1994. I want to say that the 2014 one was never voted on and passed. It was brought up for the first reading, and it was never brought up and passed. And if if my memory serves me well, um, but any ordinance. Like if we did another organizational ordinance, it automatically supersedes any one prior. That's the only way you can override another ordinance. So I mean, if you put the language in there, it's fine. But if it automatically supersedes all ones prior, but I'm for it. That's good. That's all I have. Thank you. I will be concise with my words because like a baseball pitcher that gets put on a pitch count, I've been put on a word count. Um, I have a municipal wastewater prevention program resolution that we need to pass. We, need to pass, we pass this every year. Uh, it just states that we are not polluting Piney Creek. Um, and the next thing that I need to bring up, I need to ask for um, permission to pay Jim House and Associates $895 plus shipping and handling for a pump controller for the RTI pump station. That's all I have. We'll uh, go ahead and call the meeting to order. Mr. Graham. Present. All of you. Let it know. Here. Here. Thank you. I move that we accept the uh, minutes as presented by the city clerk and dispense with the reading thereof. So we have the minutes. Have we got a motion on the table? i second that. <laughs> motion by Graham uh, to ask a question. Can we have a copy of that at the meeting as well? I know you can email it. Okay. Just like we get it to look at. Motion by Graham to dispense with the reading of the minutes and accept the minutes presented. Second by Ledbetter. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The first thing on my list is the expenditures. I, I don't know that we have to vote on that. We will. I'd like to give a motion. I stay if you want to. I'll second it. I'll make it in a motion that we pass the uh, expenditures for the group as listed in that, in that document. Your motion is second. Yes, yeah, motion by Lingerfeld, second by Brim, Colin Pepperstaff. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The second thing is uh, <coughs> that document on the 8 inch. You don't have to worry about that for the 8 yeah. inch. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the next part of the standard. It, it, he sent it uh, to us. Okay. I'll make a motion that we empower the mayor to sign the, uh, the phase, phase one document uh, for the environmental study. Or two tracks. Is it two tracks or three tracks? We can go in. Maybe three, three tracks of land in our industrial park. I'll second that. A motion by Lincoln Second by Gray. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And the last thing I think I have is the uh, top dresser. We'll make a motion to purchase the top dresser at a cost of $9,200. I'll second it. Motion by Lankfeld, second by Freeman. Question is, we're going to let the school pay us back when their funds come in. Yes, sir. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I have a contract. I'll make a motion that I 
empower the mayor to sign a contract for the uh, uh, entertainment for that for the free press. Second. Motion by Mayor Phelps, second by Cole. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's all. Okay. I'm going to make a motion uh, to hire some folks. The first one is Field of Dreams, Big Ian Richards part-time summer worker and the swimming pool adding new workers is Kaylee Thornberry, Addison Raines, Zach Allen, Jacob Brown, Dylan Carson, Victoria Mosley, and Allie Clark. I'll give you this in a second. A and according to the league, since like our old pool workers, we don't really fire them or anything. Like we just kind of make them non-active from year to year. So I want to reactivate the other pool workers that we had, and I've got their names also, which is Cody Coops, Kyle Coops, Clay Cooper, Kay Willingham, Jared Underwood, Josh Chapman, Chase Willingham, Madison Atkins, McKenna Clifton, Tyler Freeman, and Destiny Lowe. I second that. There's a motion by Freeman, second by Gray, on the paper, second by Post. That's all I have. The uh, job placement for the pool workers you know, not expired. And not expired. What the job placement resolution calls for? So it was seven days. The post was collected. The post had run out of the day on May 24th. I don't see it as a big deal. I just didn't follow the job placement. You want me to repost it? Like I said, it's not a big deal, but you know, um, there are more people to fly. Uh, I don't know what we've done. Um, I make a motion to empower the mayor pro tem um, along with the mayor for any AMRV. Uh, grants, let's do non-matching grants, uh, with regards to the Imagination Library. Second. Motion by Lutheran, second by Holt, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I make a motion to pass resolution 519-2015. This is a resolution to set the rental rate for the Tom Bevel Center, which is lowering the rates. I second that. Motion by Lever, second by Britain. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion please. Um, hmm. I wonder if I can make a motion to require department heads to supply a budget two weeks within the budget workshop so that that's just, press, that's just what is going to happen moving forward. Or if I need to make that into a resolution from here on out. I think a motion would be fine at this point in time. Um, we may want to do a resolution in the future and kind of set it in stone. Okay. But for the short term, I, I think a motion in the second would be sufficient. Let me do it for this time and then I will ask the lead what their best advice is for that. So I'm going to um, make a motion that all our department heads supply the city clerk with their internal detailed budget on June 22nd. Second. Motion to lay the second file. Oh, all in favor say aye. Aye. I'm going to ask that we uh, pass and adopt uh, Resolution 5-19-2015-1. It is the uh, Waste Water Pollution Prevention Program Resolution. Second. Motion by Graham to pass the resolution for them. Second by Holt. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
I make a motion that we pay Jim Hounds and Associates $895 plus shipping and handling for a brand new pump controller for the RTI pump station. Second. Motion by Graham, second by Freeman. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I make a motion that we pay the I do apologize. We have a uh, another resolution, and this one will be resolution 05-19-2015-2. This is the resolution providing for the City of Rainsville participation in the sales tax holiday as authorized by Act Number 2006-574. Um, this is the uh, where they provide the uh, sales tax, um, no sales tax on back to school supplies for yeah, August the 7th. That's not going to work. It's not going to be a tax holiday. The difference between the resolutions and an ordinance is a resolution is city policy, it is city law. Ordinances allow you to penalize and hold someone um, accountable for fees, jail time. It's more of a upper state level. So resolutions are they're just as good laws, you just can't penalize by money or jail time.
If it's, if it's in order, I'd like to accept the resignation of Travis Chapman. I second that. Motion by Hope, second by Linda. I want to say aye. So just that I'm, and this is the last time I'm asking, I'm just clarifying, you don't know the status of the police department right now. But when you say status, what are you talking about? Well, the, the plan for the personnel, us being down so many, what's the plan? Well, we probably had a few too many uh, to begin with. The um, Chief Senators had selected another, another individual and went through the application process and pulled his application out. So, um, you know, we'll go back to the drawing board as far as what's next. So the, the plan between you and Sanders is only to hire one more police officer? That's the, that's the thought right now. It's just one police officer. I make a motion that we pay the bills. So. I second. Motion by Ledbetter to pay the bills is presented. Second by Linka. All in favor say aye. Aye. All those say no. Motion carries. I make a move that we adjourn. Second. Motion by Graham to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye.